I don't know Friedel personally, but I see her as someone who's very generous to the community, also with her school, very private and reserved. <laughs> and I think she's a highly ethical artist. Yeah. Well, ph photography is quite a tricky medium, and um, I very much respect how she uses it. I, I mean, I used to paint, uh, so I moved to Vienna to study painting. And so with painting, while you paint, the work is being made. So I guess I've always worked analog. I'm more interested in um, making the physical work than just shooting images. That's also an interesting aspect of photography for me because there's these two steps, just like there are, is with any print media, with etchings, etc., that you make the plate and then you make the print. And I always try to make both processes visible and combine them. Yeah, and I guess choosing your medium is choosing how you want to spend your life, and I like being in the dark room a lot. I enjoy working very slowly without any light. Yeah. So, I guess. And being, al I, I like being alone when I work. Yeah. Which doesn't mean I like being alone in general, but when I work it's, it's an important aspect. I guess it depends how um, exhausted I am. So, uh, during the show in Secession where I installed my dark room inside and was producing work in the institution for two months, I think, every day, I listened to a lot of uh, Polish hip-hop and noise, I think, mainly, yeah. So, yeah, I guess the, the type of music depends on if I need a boost and I need to, yeah. Most of the time I don't listen to any music. It's, it, it has a very um, ca calming function on me, working in the dark room. Yeah, I guess if that element of my practice were gone, I wouldn't know how to make art anymore, or what to make, because it's, you know, it's the place where I make the most mistakes. So, yeah, and making mistakes is extremely valuable for me. <laughs> Yeah, and a lot of the solutions I have is from taking shortcuts or laziness in production or always working in the last minute. So thanks to the fact that I develop the film and make the prints, I can finish making the art the day before the exhibition opens, basically. <laughs> yeah, it's less, less dependency on... on time of others. Very much depend on others, but because I work with um, large format cameras and it's a very expensive technique to work with and in, I guess less and less people are working with it also because photography is dependent on the industry and, and the industry moved to digital so the analog is becoming more and more expensive. And, um, and I work as a technician for other artists, like as a camera technician or as the darkroom technician. Um, so this is a kind of codependency because I depend on their finances to produce my art and they depend on my technical skills to produce their art and then I use the hotel rooms that they pay for after the job to produce my artwork. So, yeah, it's kind of always about using the financial and, yeah, s somehow using the economical situation and the time I have to make my work. I mean, in this show, there's also work that I shot on the, I, I do a lot on the side. I think that's a huge part of my practice, just doing stuff on the side. 
and using the situation as much as I can towards my own practice. Mm. I mean, I always very much adored this. Um, I very much loved always this Linda Bankless art form ad with a double dildo and the sunglasses. It's f fantastic. And um, there's also very old work. Um, I mean, she's Italian of Sofonisba Anguissola. She has these paintings where she's painting, so she has a self portrait as basically Saint Luke because she's marrying, ma marrying, painting the holy um, family. Uh, and it's also a, a self portrait while doing the work. So I. I guess it's not only artwork by female artists, um, it's a whole genre of self-portraiture, especially in painting. You have, I don't know, Las Meninas by Velázquez, where he's also shown as the producer, etc. Um, yeah, and then there's a lot of counter-examples. Yeah. 